Hey everyone, it's Lisa Mears here. Thanks for joining me today. In this video, I'm going to share a brand new Christmas release from Sizzix, including their brand new Cherry Blossom Stencil and Stamp Tool. I'll be using their new Christmas layered stencils and stamps to make four Christmas cards with you today. So first I want to thank scrapbook.com for sending me these products to share with you all. So here I have the Sizzix stencil and stamp tool and this is the brand new cherry blossom color which is exclusive to scrapbook.com. I also have several winter and Christmas theme layered stamp sets and sentiments. There's also a birthday sentiment stamp set that I'm going to share with you and then of course I have their layered stencils. And if you haven't used their layered stencils before, they are absolutely amazing because you can make really quick cards with these stencils and your inks. So starting out, I want to show you the ornaments stencil. This stencil, just like with all of the stencils, have four layers. So you can change up the different layers and the different inks to create beautiful Christmas ornaments. You can see this first layer is the shape. Then we have the different designs that are on the ornaments, including the leaves and the bows and the string to hang the ornaments. So you can get really creative in creating different color combinations for your ornaments by just changing up the inks. Next is the Tartan stencil, and this stencil is a beautiful plaid with four different layers, so you can change up the colors of all of these stripes depending on what kind of cards you're making, whether it be a Christmas card, birthday card, or whatever it is. There's also the center circle that you can actually stamp a sentiment right inside. The next stencil is called Snowy Scene, and you can create a beautiful winter background with snow, mountains and a moon. There's also the snowflake scene stencil which is a beautiful snowflake design. There are five stamp sets and this first one is called Forest Deer. This is a layered stamp set so you have the outline of the deer and then you have the layering pieces that you could stamp with a different color to color that deer any color you want and there you have the antlers and then we also have a Christmas tree with layering pieces for the Christmas tree so if you wanted to do the outline in one color and then the two layering pieces in different colors to add some depth, that would look really pretty. This next stamp set is called Corner Wreath, and it is also a layering stamp set. It has a poinsettia, there's a pine cone, and there are some leaves, and you can layer them up with different color inks to create more depth. So I'm just gonna turn it over here so you can see. You can create this wreath with the poinsettia and the pine cones to add to your projects. Next we have a snowflake stamp set. This is called Tiny Snowflakes and again these are all layering snowflakes. So if you turn it over you can see the stamps that are used to do the different snowflake layers and all of the different snowflake stamped designs that you can get with this set. There's also a Christmas sentiment stamp set called Seasonal Sentiments. So you have Happy Holidays, Merry Christmas, Merry and Bright. There's also Seasons Greetings with some greenery stamps. There's also the word Sparkle. So again, that's the Seasonal Sentiments stamp set. And then here's a non-Christmas stamp set. This is a sentiment stamp set. It's called Art Nouveau Sentiments. So you have different occasion sentiments such as with gratitude, birthday wishes, with love, you inspire me, thank you, sending hugs, and celebrate. Now if you're interested in any of these products, be sure to check the description box below. I will have links to all of the products there for you. So next I want to share with you the Sizzix Stencil and Stamp Tool. This Stencil and Stamp Tool is by Sizzix and it is exclusive to scrapbook.com. The tool itself is not new, however the color is. So when you see me open this up you'll see that it's in the brand new Cherry Blossom color. So this is a stamp positioner so it will do stamping, it will also let you do stenciling, and there is the color down there at the bottom of the box in the cherry blossom color. 
the back of the box is going to show you how to use this tool so it'll show you the different platforms and how to use them and how to set up this platform for stenciling but if you're using it for stamping it'll also show you on the back of the box how to set it up for stamping as well and there's also instructions included in this box but look at this color it is so pretty so you can see that it's all pink and I'm super excited about this because I'm getting a new craft room and my color scheme is going to have pink in it so I'm so excited about adding this tool to my new craft room so real quick I wanted to show you that the cherry blossom color is the same cherry blossom color that is available on the Sizzix Big Shot Switch Plus machine which is an electronic die cutting machine. So if you have that die cutting machine, this stencil and stamp tool will complement it perfectly. So inside of the package is a manual that shows you how to set up your tool and this manual is in four different languages, English, French, Spanish, and Portuguese. So here is the tool itself. It has the stencil and stamp base as well as the stamping plate on top and the stamping plate comes off when you're doing stenciling you would take that stamping plate off of the base you can see how thin it is for easy storage you can just stick it on a shelf and it has a non-slip backing so it's not going to slide around on your table it also comes with a sticky grid sheet and this sticky grid sheet has a backing on the front and a backing on the back and you just simply peel off the backing and put it there on the platform base when you're ready to do your stenciling and stamping. Because it has this sticky grid sheet, this is how your cardstock is going to hold down onto the base of the tool. So here I removed the top backing sheet and now I'm going to remove the bottom backing sheet and now both sides are sticky so I'm just going to place this on the platform base. Now I like to hang on to those covers because when I'm not using it I will put the top cover back on just so that little dust particles don't get on that sticky grid. Now you can use these sticky grid sheets multiple times with several different projects but they will get dirty and inked up and if that's the case you can always purchase additional sticky grid sheets on the scrapbook.com website. This piece is called the stencil adapter and you would need this when you're working with the Sizzix layered stencils. So you can see that the top of the stencil adapter has two holes and they fit in the pegs that are on the base of this platform. There are also the pegs at the bottom of that stencil adapter and that's where you're going to hook your stencil into. So I just want to show you an example of how you would use this with the Sizzix stencils. All of the Sizzix stencils that are the layered stencils that they've come out with recently have the holes in the top of the stencil and you simply just hook your stencil into the pegs on the stencil adapter. And then depending on how big your stencil is, then you can then determine where to place that stencil adapter on the hinge that's located on the base platform. So you can see that there's four rows to that stencil adapter. You can place it in the third row or even in the fourth row, but you can see if you even go to the first row, the stencil is now going off of the platform. So depending on how big your stencil is, and these stencils are six by six inches, you just need to determine where you put the stencil adapter in order for the entire stencil to fit on the platform base. You can use this tool with stencils from other companies, but you would not need to use the stencil adapter. You can simply just put your cardstock on the sticky grid and then attach your stencil on top. The stencil will actually stick to the sticky grid and you can see that it's not going to fall off. 
So this is a scrapbook.com stencil, but you can use other stencils as well. I also want to show you that when you want to use this tool for stamping, you have to remove that stencil adapter because the stamping plate is not going to fit in that hinge with the stencil adapter sitting in there. What I love about this tool is not only the color, but also that it is so big. The tool itself measures 9.37 inches by 14.25 inches. So it's pretty big and you can put a full size sheet of cardstock on this tool. So this is an eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock and it fits perfectly, which is great for if you're stamping out large stamps, maybe you have some slimline stamps or five by seven stamps, they all fit inside this tool. So at the beginning of this video, I did mention that this tool is not new, but the color is. So I wanted to show you the original stencil and stamp tool is there on the right, and that is the gray color, and it has the mint stencil adapter. So the new one is there on the left in the cherry blossom. And I previously did a video using the original tool, which I will link up at the top right corner of this video, as well as in the description box below. But if you do happen to have this tool, it is the identical tool, just a different color. So in my previous video, I showed you how to use the tool in depth, and I also showed you several cards. I think I made 17 cards in that previous video, so be sure you check that one out as well. But you can see they're completely identical. Even on the back, it has the same backing, and they're the same width measurements all around. So let's go ahead and make some cards. And I'm going to start out with the Snowflake Scene Stencil. This is four layers. We'll go ahead and take it out of the packaging. Now, at the top of this stencil, Sizzix has put in here, see the number one there on the right? It tells you this is stencil number one, and they're all numbered for you. So one, two, three, and four. So you know what order to stencil your design in. So I'm going to go ahead and start with a piece of white cardstock and my cardstock measures six by six inches. Now just because these stencils are six by six inches does not mean that you have to make a card that is six by six square. You can actually cut these down. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the top of this platform because that top is just for stamping and I'm doing stenciling. And I'll go ahead and put my stencil converter on to the hinge of my base and I'm just going to line up my cardstock on the back of the stencil to make sure I have everything centered and then I'm going to add my stencil to the pegs and just press everything down so that it sticks to the sticky grid. So whenever I use layered stencils my biggest challenge is trying to find the color of ink that I want to use and I found that the best thing for me is to go on Google and do a search for Christmas color palettes. Since I'm doing a Christmas card, I just searched for Christmas color palettes. And I think I'm going to go with this one. And it gives me four different colors. You can see the red. There's kind of like a tan, brown, and then there's a green and a teal. So that's what I'm going to go with. And I went in my ink collection and found inks that match all of those colors. So I'm going to be using some scrapbook.com inks. I'll be using the Cardinal Red ink, the Gingerbread ink, the Oasis ink, as well as Pine ink. So for my first stencil, I'm going to start out with the Oasis ink and I'm just taking an ink blending tool and inking up all of the snowflakes that are on this stencil. I am going to cut some of the stenciling out just because this video is long enough and I wanted to save some time. So after inking up the first stencil, I'm adding the second stencil and just securing it to the pegs on the stencil adapter. And I'm using the gingerbread ink for this layer. I'll remove that and add the third stencil. 
and this third stencil I'll use the pine ink. So when switching between stencils all you have to do is place the next stencil in the pegs and it does line up perfectly. You don't have to try to figure out if the stencil is lined up because the stencil adapter it pretty much takes the guesswork out of it. If you're using other brand stencils you can use your grid on your sticky mat to line the stencils up. So here's the completed design and because I want to make an A2 size card I am using a rectangle die to cut out part of the stenciled background that I want to use for my card. I'm going to go ahead and add this panel back to my sticky grid and this time I'm going to do some stamping so I'm placing my sentiment stamps where I want them and then I'll add the stamp plate back to the platform base and then I'll ink up the stamp, add the stamp plate back to the hinge and stamp it down. I'm going to take this panel and I'm going to put it on a piece of red cardstock. So I'm using the Peppermint Smooth Cardstock from scrapbook.com. There's two reds in there. I decided to go with the brighter red. I think that matches more closely with the red ink color. And I'll go ahead and add my panel to the red cardstock that I cut to four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And then I'll add that to a card base. So I'm going to add a few of my Spellbinders gems to the centers of the snowflakes and that will complete this card. So moving on, I'm going to use the Ornaments stencil. I cut a piece of white cardstock to 6 by 6 inches and I'm just going to add my cardstock to my sticky grid and add my stencil. I did turn my stencil and stamp tool vertically so it's easier for you guys to see this on the screen. And I'm going to spray some pixie spray off camera on the back of this stencil and then just press that stencil back down to the cardstock all along the areas surrounding the ornaments just so that the stencil is actually sticking to the cardstock and doesn't come up accidentally as I'm inking. So for this first stencil I'm using the scrapbook.com pink lemonade ink and after I ink up the entire opening of the stencil I'm coming back in with that same ink just along the bottom right edge and making it a little bit darker to add some depth to the ornaments. Now on this top left ornament I'm going to be using one of the smaller ink blending brushes from scrapbook.com and I'm going to come in with that same ink and the reason I switched blending brushes is because the one I was using was really big and if I would have continued to use that one for this top left ornament I would have accidentally got ink on the bottom ornament the one right below it and I didn't want that so by coming in with a smaller ink blending brush I'm able just to add ink to that one ornament without it going into the next one. If you don't have a smaller ink blending brush, you could always use some mint tape and mask off the bottom ornament, just like I'm using here on this particular stencil. So I'm just masking off the areas that I don't want to have ink on, and then I'm going to use my larger ink blending brush to add this Caribbean ink to the stencil openings. So with this stencil, you have a line, you also have some leaves, and there's also a star. And because I want to add a different color ink to the tops of these ornaments, that's why I masked this part off. So now I'm removing the mint tape from the top of the ornament where the leaves are, and then adding the mint tape over that inked line so that I can add the green ink to the leaves. And I'm going to do the same thing for the ornament on the left. I'm just going to remove the mint tape from the bow at the top of that ornament, and I'm going to mask off the leaf pattern that's on the bottom of the ornament so that I can ink the bow up in the cardinal red ink. I'll go ahead and remove that stencil and I'll add my next stencil. This is the third stencil in the set. This stencil has the rest of the ribbon and it also has another leaf on the other ornament. It also has some lines that are horizontal 
above and below that teal line on that top right ornament, but I forgot to ink that up here and I will come back in off camera and ink that up at the very end. So now I'm going to add my last stencil and this time I wanted all of these other designs as well as the strings for my ornaments to be gold. So I'm using this metallic gilding polish. This is the gold treasure color and I'm applying a thin layer with a palette knife over the openings of the stencil. You only need a very thin layer and any excess you can just take the side of your palette knife and scrape it off and put it back in the jar. So once the first one is finished, I'll move on to the next ornament and make sure all of that gold gilding polish gets into the openings of the stencil. And I'll repeat that process with the last ornament. I'll scrape off all of the excess gilding polish, put it back in the jar, and remove that stencil from my cardstock. I did set that aside to dry, and once it was dried, I trimmed down the top edge of the cardstock so that it's just flush with the top edge of the strings of these ornaments. So the entire panel I actually cut down to five and three quarters by five and three quarters. And now I'm going to go ahead and stamp my sentiment happy holidays into the white area on the bottom right. I am going to add a couple mats of cardstock behind this beautiful ornament layer. I'm going to pick a red color from the scrapbook.com playful pattern paper pad and I'm also going to be using a metallic cardstock from Tim Holtz and I went ahead and cut down the metallic cardstock to five and three quarters by five and three quarters and the red is six by six inches and then I'll just back that up onto a six by six inch card base. So that's gonna complete my ornament card. I love how that turned out. I think that stencil is so great for making a quick and easy ornament Christmas card. And remember, you can just change up the look by changing the different color inks that you use. So for my next card, I'm going to use the snowy scene stencils. It creates this beautiful scene with the snow and the mountains and the sky. And you can see that there are the four layers. So there's the moon with the snow and there's some more snowy hills at the bottom. You've also got a stencil for the mountains. And this stencil is great for adding stamps as well. So I'm going to add some stamps to this later on but first I want to show you how I stencil this up to make a really pretty winter scene. I'm going to start out with a piece of blue cardstock from this playful paper pad from scrapbook.com. I'll go ahead and add the cardstock behind the stencil and then just put it on my stencil adapter and just press it down to the stencil and stamp tool. I am going to use some pixie spray which is a light adhesive spray and spray the bottom of the stencil because there's a large open area which represents the snowy hill and I want to make sure that that large open area stays adhered to the cardstock as I'm doing my inking. So once I've done that off camera I'm going to start with my white pigment ink from scrapbook.com and I'm going to ink up this stencil. Now I started by adding ink to the moon and to the snow and the sky but I realized quickly that I would get a better effect if I wait and just apply some of the scrapbook.com cloud whip to that area when I'm all done inking up all of my stencils because the cloud whip will make it a nice bright white and it will also add a little bit of dimension which is that's really the look I was going for with those snowdrops. So I quickly stopped inking up the top and I'm going to just apply a light layer of white ink to the snowy hill at the bottom of my stencil. Next, I'll add the second stencil and off camera I did spray some pixie spray to the back of that stencil and just pressed it down so that it would stick to the cardstock and then I'm going to apply the same white pigment ink to the second snowy hill. Next I'm going to come in with the Caribbean ink which is a teal ink and I'm going to apply just to the top edges of that snowy hill on both stencil number two and then I'll remove that and I'll add stencil number one back and I'm just going to apply that to the top edge 
of that snowy hill as well. That just will add some more depth to those snowy hills. So I'll go ahead and remove that stencil and now I'm ready for stencil number three. This is the mountains stencil. I did apply some pixie spray off camera and I'm going to come in with some fog ink. This is a light gray and I'll apply that to the mountains. Next I'll come in with the white pigment ink and I'm only going to apply the white ink to the very top edge of all of those mountains. The last stencil will provide a shadow for the mountaintops. So I'm going to use my Caribbean ink for this stencil. And take a look at all of that depth that I just created just by adding a little bit darker color ink. I'm going to add some more depth to this scene. So what I'm doing now is I just removed my sticky grid and I'm just placing my cardstock on my base of my stencil and stamp tool. It actually sticks a little bit because that cardstock had a little bit of stick to it from being on the sticky grid. And I'm going to take out some blue inks and I'm just inking up the edges of the top portion only, which is the sky. So I'm starting out with my postal blue ink and applying that dark blue or that very deep rich blue just along the edges but just towards the upper part above the mountains. Then I'm going to come in with my next color blue which is surfboard and I'm going to start where the postal blue left off and then I'm going to ink up and add more towards the center of that sky. And yes I'm going to cover up that moon but as I said in the beginning I'm going to come back in with some cloud whip later on and I'll be able to add that back. Next I'm going to come in with a purple color. This is the Mardi Gras ink from scrapbook.com and I'm going to come in where that second blue ink left off and come in more towards the center. So I'm just adding some more depth to the sky to bring more of this background out. After adding the purple ink I'll come back in with some of the blue inks and just blend a little bit better just to get a little bit of a better blend there on my sky. And then the last color I'm going to use is the Caribbean color and I'm just going to add that at the very, very bottom underneath that purple. So there's my background. I am going to clean off the base of my stencil and stamp tool. I'm going to come in with this Ranger archival ink cleaner and just put a little bit on a paper towel and clean it up that way. It's because these are hybrid inks. They don't always come off with just water, but they come off perfectly with this archival ink from Ranger. And I just wipe that down and it's just as good as new. I'm going to add my sticky grid sheet back to my base and my stencil adapter as well. And just in case I went over any of those mountain tops with the ink that I added for the sky, I'm just going to add that mountain top stencil right back to my cardstock and just go over that one more time with some white ink just to make sure that those mountain peaks are highly defined. And I did the same thing for the stencil with the shadows for the mountain and just went over that again with the Caribbean ink. Okay, so now I am ready to come in and add the snow. So I'm taking out my cloud whip. I'm just mixing it up a little bit and taking it on a palette knife. And I'm really pressing it in to those circles on the stencil that represent the snow. And I'm going to do the same thing for the moon. And I'm just wiping off any excess with the straight edge of my palette knife. And I can put that back in the jar. So here's a closer look at the background so far. You can see how much brighter the snow and the moon are just by adding that texture paste. Next I'm going to do some stamping on the bottom portion of that cardstock. I'm going to be using the Forest Deer stamps. These are some layering stamps for a deer and the trees and there are several stamps to make up the deer and there are several to make up the tree and I am going to start with one of the solid stamps for the deer and I'm starting with the outline stamp for the tree. 
So I'm just positioning them where I want them on my card layer. I'll go ahead and add the stamp plate to the base. And then I'm going to pick up those stamps with the stamping platform. I'm going to ink these up with some black ink because I wanted this to be a silhouette card. I didn't want to add any other color, just black, because I wanted it just to have the color of the background and then have the stamps in black. I just think having the silhouette just makes for a really pretty and stunning card. So. I'm going to go ahead and ink the stamps up and then add them to the background. Next, I'll line up the stamp that has the entire outline of the deer and I'll stamp that down. And after I do that, I'm going to change out the stamp so that I can add the solid for the legs and the face. And I just had to line that up with the outline to get make sure that I get it straight. And I'll ink that up a few times to get a really nice black impression. And after the deer is inked up, I'm going to add the left part of the tree and the right part of the tree separately, but again, both in black ink. So because these are layering stamps, you can use these with colored inks to add depth. So if you wanted to stamp out the tree in, let's say, a darker green, and then the left part in a medium tone green and the right part of the tree stamp in a lighter green, you can add a lot of depth to that tree if you were adding colored ink. Same thing with the deer. You can stamp out the outline and then use the inside pieces for different colors for the face, the antlers, and the body. Next I'm going to add that tree in one more spot on my card and I'm going to follow the same procedures as I did with the first tree. So starting with the outline and then I'll add the left part and the right part of the tree separately. Again both with black ink to fill it in. So after stamping my stamped images, I thought that adding more snow to the trees and the lower portion of that card panel would look really pretty and it would just add to the effect of the snowy scene. So I'm taking that first stencil and I just shifted it down. I also turned it over and I'm adding some of the cloud whip to the snow so that it appears on those trees and also further down on that card panel. And I'm going to do the same thing just by shifting that stencil over and down so that I can create several little different areas of snow on the bottom of that card panel. So here's a look at my finished card. I did add the Merry and Bright sentiment by stamping on white cardstock and just cutting it out. I also added a black mat and then added that to a white card base. For my next card, I am going to be using the Corner Wreath stamp set. Again, this is a layering stamp set, which will allow you to build a wreath for your card. There is some greenery, a pine cone, as well as a poinsettia. And on the back of the package, it will show you what stamps to use in order to build your layers. And again, you can ink these up with different colors to create some depth. So I'm going to start out by adding the outline stamps to my card stock. There are four outline stamps that I'm going to be using. Whenever I'm adding color to layering stamps, I like to use the scrapbook.com inks to do that because they come in color families. So for example, for the green inks, they have four different color green inks all the way from light medium to dark and here is the pink color family again I'm using three inks from that one as well so for the greens I'm starting out with the darkest color which is the fourth green and inking the outline and with the poinsettia I'm using the darkest pink color and for the pine cone I'm using the darkest color in the wood color family Next, I'll go ahead and remove those stamps from the stamping platform and I'm going to add the next stamp in the series. And I'm just going to line it up with the first stamp that I've already stamped down. Once the stamps are lined up, I'll go ahead and ink up those stamps with the medium color in that color family that I'm using. So in the pink color family, I'll be using the number three ink 
inking that up and then I'm going to come to the wood color family and using the number two ink and then for the greens I'll be using the number three ink. And then I'll press those down and then once that's finished I'm going to repeat the process with the next set of layering stamps in the sequence. And this time I'm going to come in with my lightest ink and again adding that light and medium and dark ink it's going to add a lot of depth to these stamped images. So I will not get to the snowflake layered stamp set in this video because I didn't want to take any more time. This video is already long enough, but do remember that there is another set of snowflakes that you can use for the layering stamps as well. And that would make for really pretty winter cards or Christmas cards. So once I finish inking these up, I went ahead and stamped out a couple more stamps that do not have the layering stamps. They're just individual stamps and I stamped them out in some of the pine green ink. Off camera I stenciled up this tartan stencil and I actually cut this down to fit in a two size card. This was super easy to do. So here's a look at the stencil. It's a really pretty plaid. You can use this for cards for any occasion. And I love how it has that center circle right in the middle so you can stamp a sentiment right inside. And here is my stenciled card I went ahead and used some reds greens and some brown inks but I did cut some circles out with some circle dies and I layered a couple of the circles on top of each other one in a brown cardstock and one in a white cardstock and stamped out the happy holidays sentiment and that corner wreath stamp that I just stamped is perfect for going around the edge of this circle I went ahead and fussy cut all of these images out. I'm not sure if there are dies for this stamp set or not, but I will have them linked below if there are. So if I can find any on the website, I'll have them linked below. But I didn't have any on hand, so I went ahead and fussy cut them out. And I just layered them here how I want them to appear on my card, and then I'll go ahead and glue them down. And I added that layer to an A2 size card base. I added some of the Brutus Monroe glitter glaze to my flowers. This is just a clear glaze with some glitter in it and I'm just using my pinky to dab some onto the flowers just to add a little bit of sparkle to them. So if you want more information about any of the products that you saw in this video, please check the description box of this YouTube video for product links. And I always appreciate when you click on my links because it does help support me. If you had a favorite card today, I would love for you to leave me a comment and let me know which one was your favorite. And if you like this video, please click that thumbs up button. And if you like videos like this, be sure to click that subscribe button to subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn on your bell notifications so that you'll be notified every time I release a new video. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Have a great day. Bye-bye.